so this is my current PC. And there's so much to love about it. It looks awesome, it plays games to the max, it's got 2080 Ti inside here. But it's time for an upgrade because the hardware inside here, at least the CPU, is getting a little bit dated, shall we say, and it's running a little bit too hot for my liking. I'm actually taking the side panel off whenever I want to render stuff and it's just becoming a little bit annoying. You may remember this. This is the NZXT build. So we're going to be keeping this case. We'll be adding, adding some more RGB flavorings to it. We'll be putting in a more powerful CPU, 12 cores, which is going to be excellent for doing all of the rendering and stuff that I do, as well as actually taking out that 2080 Super and putting in the Zotac 2080 Ti that is in my current rig. It is always a little bit of a shame taking apart a PC, but I mean, to be honest with you, it's always better when it's sort of onwards and upwards, shall we say. And there's been so much to like about this, but it just has annoyed me so much that Corsair didn't put as much airflow as that they could have done. All they needed to do really was place a larger gap along the front and along the top, and I think this would have been a lot more reasonable, shall we say, in terms of temperatures. But this is the only thing that we actually want from here. I probably should actually undo the screws, that would help, wouldn't it? I'm under pressure. I'm under pressure. This is uh, speed building. Or at least it would be if I could actually uh, build with some speed. This is something that I really do quite recommend actually. It's Zotax 2080 Ti. You can see from the dust this has got a lot of use because it has been in my personal system. Out of the box it runs way too loud. So you just need to get some uh, software like Zotax own Firestorm I think it's called to actually reduce the fan speed and allow it to run a little bit warmer but at a more reasonable acoustic level. So the reason that I'm actually going for the H510 Elite here is because it strikes the right balance in terms of size. I didn't want anything too crazy as I do want this to actually sit on my desk. But in terms of getting the right balance between looks and airflow performance, there are these very large vents all the way along the right hand side of the case, which means that the fan still can breathe. Admittedly not as well as if it was mesh, but I think it sort of does fit in the right sort of sweet spot between the two. It seems so, so weird taking out a 2080 Super just to replace it with a 2080 Ti. I think this is not really a very normal thing to do. You can see just how far the manufacturers go into improving what is the stock cooling solution. I mean, the 2080 Super still works very well. I mean, the default, default uh, cooler I don't think many people are going to have too many problems with. I reckon it won't take me very long to actually make all of these swaps, but I'm always very wrong. Timekeeping has never been my strongest point. It's a very easy and tidy case to actually build in. I am using the radiator in the configuration that it's currently in. So it's just a case of taking that off, plopping it on board the new chip, so putting that new motherboard in. So in theory, it shouldn't take very long at all. The magic of a standing desk though, look, suddenly that gets a whole lot easier. Maybe too low. Bring it up a little bit, there we go. Taking a PC apart really, it's just a case of unplugging everything that you plugged in in the first place. That might sound quite obvious, but it's a lot quicker to take something apart than it is to actually put it in in the first place. You don't need to worry about routing any cables, you don't need to worry about where everything goes. It's just a case of unplugging and pulling everything out. But it can still be quite fiddly. Complete, there we go, heavy handed. That is the old board coming out, ready for the new one. Let's place our first component inside then, shall we? and spill all of the screws in the process. So this then is X299 and inside we do have our 12 core Intel processor. All of the parts by the way to everything I'm actually migrating to is going to be listed down below with my now global, yes global, Amazon affiliate links if you do want to check it out. But this is clearly a big bit of kit. I'm looking forward to actually seeing what it's capable of doing. My previous boards have all been very reliable. It doesn't matter the brand. I've never really had any big problems and certainly nothing that can't be fixed with a BIOS update. I think it was mainly just when Ryzen originally launched uh, that I ran into quite a few different issues with boards and RAM, but I mean, that's obviously not been a problem now for quite a long time. Backplate attached directly to the motherboard, so you don't need to put anything in when you're building up your PC, but I mean, it's not really a big selling point, is it? Just a bit of a pain, really, because I can't see everything. There you go. So that is the motherboard all nicely installed, and it's looking pretty good, pretty tasty. We've definitely got a black theme going on here, which I love because it means that once you've got the RGB going, it all illuminates. We'll probably put the RAM in next. This is Corsair 32 gigabytes of Dominator Platinum. You'll notice that because this is a X299 board, you do have eight slots. 
We're only going to be populating four of them, that's because they only need 32 gigabytes of RAM, but obviously if you wanted to upgrade, in theory, you could get 128 gig in here, it's quite a lot. Oh no, sorry, it's actually toilet paper time, I'm, I'm sorry, I completely forgot about that, because it is actually now time to fit our CPU cooler, as it's dangling here, it'd be a bit silly to not sort this out first. I say toilet paper, you shouldn't really use toilet paper actually, because it's got a load of lint inside, so it sort of comes off as you're rubbing, whereas just standard kitchen paper is a little bit of a better bet to be honest. And then it's just a case of giving it a good rub down. I use just, what is this? This is some Arctic Clean stuff that I got from Amazon. It's lasted me about three years and you think how many PC bills I do. Uh, cost around about five pounds. I'll link it down below. This is a really cool cooler boy. This is the, is it the X63? X, yes it is, there you go, first guess. This is the X63 and you get this really cool light up screen which I absolutely love. It's my favourite CPU cooler on the market at the moment because the uh, performance of it is fantastic, but you get that extra utility, but it is very, very expensive. So if you're just going for CPU uh, thermal performance, then you're probably going to want to look at something else. But if you want the full package, this is highly recommended. So let's pop that down nice and neatly and tidily. And on our screws go. This is a lot easier if you haven't put the RAM in yet. Top tip. Yes, there we go. Look at that. Seamless. Remember, of course, to use a cross pattern so we don't put too much strain on that CPU or the socket. Now it's time to put the RAM in. And this stuff looks awesome. It's definitely some of the best looking stuff on the market. As I say, going insane. I've been in this, this house now for a very long time. I actually went to the supermarket yesterday for the first time in a week and a half, and it was glorious, let me tell you that. But here you go, look at that. That is some good looking RAM on the top as well. This is where you've got these light bars. And there's an effect actually called stack, where it's almost like Tetris and they flow between them. It looks really good. Really good. I don't know why I'm whispering. Time to whack in our new graphics card then. Nice and simply seamless. I'm actually putting in a few extra PCIe Express cards. The main one being that Optane SSD but then I've also got a 10 gig card for networking. But because I installed an underglow kit into this, I actually have to now rearrange some things and take all of these slots out. I mean, I can't think the last time I actually took all of the slots out, but I'm having to do it here. So you can see what I wanted to do is give this card as much airflow as possible, which is why I've put these as low down as I can. So there's still plenty of room for it to breathe. Hopefully we won't have any temperature issues. Hopefully. Oh, I've cocked up. I have not put the uh, the extra storage in. Got to take it all out now. So I'm going to be placing all of the games on this. It is a Seagate Firecuda, what is it, 510. This was very good actually. We used it in a sponsored video um, a couple of months ago that Seagate sent out. It's just a case of plopping that in and then we have two terabytes of total storage plus I think it's 38 terabytes on the NAS. So that is our motherboard, RAM, processor, cooler, Definitely a lot of cable management still to be done, graphics cards, uh, PCIe SSDs, and of course our 10G uh, networking card. The last thing to do is to actually install these RGB strips, which yes, it probably would make more sense to use NZXT ones as they would then fit in with the ecosystem. And I'd also like to swap out this stock fan for an NZXT RGB fan. But all of that stuff is at the old studio and at the moment it's a bit difficult to go get it. So we have to make do Boom, there we go, nice and tasty. We should now be ready to turn this on and see if it works. I'm really, really excited actually. I'm looking forward to having a PC that actually is gonna live on my desk. I haven't really had one before, this is, this is great. But to answer the obvious question that I'm sure you'd be having, which is why have I not done any cable management yet, is because I always like to test my rigs are working properly before I spend the time doing that, otherwise it seems a little bit counterproductive. Okay then, moment of truth. I'm pretty sure everything's plugged in. Let's give it a go. Have I not done the classic thing? Oh, I haven't actually plugged the power cord in. That probably would do it. Round two. We have action. Will we get a boot screen though? That's the, uh, the ultimate question. Just the keyboard and mouse is plugged in. Obviously display and power. making a good noise, I like it, I like it. But 
but we're not seeing any action. Hey, there we go. That is what you want to see. Um, I have actually already got an OS installed on this, so thinking about it, this should actually spring into proper life. Let's have a looky. Here we go. Bang. Marcus's new PC, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to be bringing you a lot more updates on how this goes. I need to wipe everything, do a load of benchmarks on it, and I will eventually be doing a full custom liquid cooled loop on this thing. I'm serious this time. I know I've said that before, but I really mean it. Um, I've already spoken to Corsair. A lot of the components are going to come out, so we're going to take that gorgeous all-in-one out, and we're going to put in a custom uh, custom loop, put in a new pump res, all of this good stuff, and hopefully put some more RGB lighting in it. But yeah, so far so good. Benchmarks and stuff should come very very soon. Thank you so much for checking out this video. As I say, all of the links and things will be down in the description below. If you want to check them out, please hit the like button if you enjoyed it. It helps out so, so much, you really wouldn't believe. Um, get subscribed if you haven't already. That's the other one. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.